Uh, Mayor Darling, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning and we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us and participate at St. Paul Lutheran Church in our current sermon series. We're calling it David's Hats and we're talking about the different vocations, the different hats that David wore during his life and he wore different hats such as warrior, friend, musician, king, you name it. And we all wear those kind of hats too. So we're doing that study. But thank you for being with us today. My first question for you is this. When we're young, we all want to grow up and be something. And as we grow up, we have those dreams and those visions. What was one of the first things that you really wanted to be when you grew up? And then following that is, if someone were to tell you at that time that you were going to grow up and be the mayor of the city of McAllen, how would you have reacted? Well, first off, I always wanted to be a football player when I was a little kid. Okay. Um, and obviously, I don't have the size for that, or probably the talents, but I always thought about that. But um, if somebody told me uh, I was going to be the mayor of McAllen, the first, my first thought would be, um, Texas would be realistic. I grew up in New York in upstate New York, and the winters were brutal. And so I remember watching the Rose Bowl game every January, that's a football tie-in, and I thought, I'm gonna live someplace where it doesn't snow. And so Texas was, um, would have been appropriate for me, but certainly not mayor. I, I wasn't exposed to um, any kind of um, leadership or um, community involvement from that standpoint. And so I never, um, as a early uh, early, uh, in my early childhood, I never would have thought about being mayor. Uh, Good. When I, I was the first president of my student council in high school, so um, I thought about um, leadership at that point, but not necessarily a mayor, for certainly. Oh. Yeah, Mayor Darling, you have done so many different things in your life. You've had many different accomplishments. You have gone to law school. You served as corporate counsel for the city of McAllen. You serve at Doctors Hospital at Renaissance. You've served in the military. You've been part of nonprofits and businesses throughout the valley. You're now serving as mayor of McAllen. What is special or remarkable for you about serving as mayor? Well, I, I love the city of McAllen. You know, um, I'm not a homegrown person, but I've been involved. Uh, it's my 38th year wow. and involved in, in the city, and so it's. Um, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great community. I, I think the, the most rewarding thing um, I've seen is um, when we had the um, crisis on the border, the immigration mm -hmm. crisis mm -hmm. of seeing the community come together and saying, you know, there's people in need. Um, I, I'm not, I don't want to get into the political side of it at all, but at least the people that were here were here legally. They had promises to appear in court, so we're not going to get into that issue. But seeing the community come together and providing humanitarian, the humanitarian effort that they did for uh, people, I think we now had the 40,000th person go through our bus station in the respite center, um, was um, very, very rewarding to me um, just to be uh, part of it. And I didn't have to, you know, the leadership role, we decided early on that we needed um, one leader to make sure that it went smoothly because there had a lot of people involved. And so I wasn't that one, and that was fine with me. Sister Norma did a fantastic job and still doing a fantastic job. But just seeing our community, not only McAllen, but the Valley come together and provide, that's probably been the most rewarding thing for me as mayor. And, and maybe the, mo well, I, I'll take it back, one of the most rewarding things for me, but certainly as mayor. Um, and so I've, I've enjoyed that and it's still going on. I'm going to ask you a question that wasn't really on our list of questions. I apologize for that. But as you serve as the leader of McAllen, please share with me some of the principles of leadership that you put into practice every day. Well, you know, inclusion. Um, being a leader of a group is one thing, but you, leadership is really getting everybody involved. Um, sometimes it's setting the agenda, but it's different, different modes, different hats of a leader, I think. But the main one to me is getting everybody involved as a group. And whether that's your citizens, you know, we've tried to um, 
I've done things like the State of the City, if you've ever seen my State of the City, it's kind of theatrics, but it has a message. And, you know, the first year was um, making sure that we did inclusion in, in government and different areas, so working with the school district and those kind of things and setting the, setting the um, pace for the city, uh, our other city commissioners and also our city leaders, um, city managers, get more involved in their groups to bring inclusion in. Um, and we did that, I think. And then the second year, um, we talked about providing a um, uh, future for our kids. You know, it's kind of trite to say our future is our kids, that's pretty obvious, but I think in, important in the Valley was setting a future for our kids so that they stay or they come back, because many leave. And so what we did is work with um, UTRGV, uh, with um, the Research Center of the New University, um, Texas A&M, um, South Texas College, um, quality of life issues, the city commission got behind some of that in the tracking and so, but that set the tone for that. And the whole idea is um, um, trying to set a little bit of agenda by listening first and saying, what do we need? And people are saying, gee, I wish my daughter would move back from UT when she graduates. And so I have that experience. And so listening what the community needs and then trying to activate the group and whatever that is and getting people involved in it. Our third year, we said everybody matters in McAllen, and that meant uh, making sure that we didn't leave any anybody behind. And so now we're working with, uh, for instance, putting in Wi-Fi in low-income neighborhoods. Everybody's got a computer, but they don't have access to Wi-Fi and internet. And so we're doing programs like that. Um, if you took a look at our summer program, the staff really got behind it, and all our programs have um, um, special needs components to it. Not only the, the programs, but each facility does. And so. Um, it's really kind of listening, okay, and then it's kind of setting some goals and then engaging people to uh, carry out that, those goals and make them successful. Okay. We all wear many different hats in our lives. That's what we're talking about. And I've had the opportunity to wear different hats in my life. Um, serving as a missionary in Guatemala, we used to talk all the time about the different hats that we would wear. My primary hat was to be an evangelistic missionary and a church planter. But there were times that I also wore the hat of agricultural missionary when the agricultural missionary wasn't in the village, or the hat of tour guide when someone would come down and want to see the country and visit and see the mission sites. Uh, there's always the hats of father and husband and friend that we wear. So we wear many different hats, but one of the hats that we all wear, no matter who we are or where we live, is the hat of citizenship. Could you tell me what makes a good citizen? Well, I, I, to me, a good citizen or what, what it is, is somebody that stays informed. You know, if you're not informed, um, you don't know really um, too much what's going on. And so being informed so you understand what the opportunities are to be a good citizen and um, th and some people get involved because they want to fix things. Some people get involved because they're angry at things. Uh, some people are involved because they just feel that, that need to, to do it. And so a lot of different reasons why people get involved in citizenship. But, you know, the thing is to be uh, informed, uh, involved, right, okay. and, and get involved in it. And, um, and, you know, show initiative in trying to solve the different things. So uh, we have a great group of citizens here. McAllen's always been built on um, our, our advisory boards. We have hundreds of people that serve on advisory boards. In fact, we have the um, advisory board appreciation dinner coming up. But, um, you know, and that's the one way where we get informed is listening to our advisory boards and, and um, what suggestions they have. And they go even beyond that um, from initiating programs and those kind of things. And so I think uh, if you had a model um, for citizenship, I think one of the ones that's been with McAllen for years is um, is that model and that's if you want to be involved in McAllen you can certainly be involved and so uh, that's very important I think so we have involved and informed citizens and that makes good citizens and now I'm going to ask a follow-up question to that you talked a little bit about citizens that are involved in the community and as a citizen you can be a very passive citizen or you can be a very involved and active citizen Tell me why you prefer to have the active and involved citizens here in McAllen. Sure, I think it's very rewarding. You know, I do, a, I 
do a lot of talks with kids. And to me, the most rewarding thing in my life has been um, being able to volunteer and, and participate and help a little bit. You don't, you don't need to be the leader. I mean, you know, that happens. But you, if you get involved uh, in, uh, and through volunteering and helping people and, you know, uh, practicing the golden rule, uh, it's very, very rewarding. I, when we do the, uh, the Christmas uh, giveaway, I always talk to the young people and I say, I want you to come back and tell me how you feel after you've done it. And they all think it's very rewarding, it's very special to be able to help people. And so I think um, it has its certain rewards. So good citizenship usually has pretty good rewards. <laughs> and and that, those are personal rewards, not, not monetary or uh, those kind of things, but real personal rewards. Yeah. So one final question as we wrap up today. My wife and I have lived here for about two years now, and McAllen really is a great place. It offers so many different things to their citizens that live here. Tell me in your own words, please, what makes McAllen, Texas the best place in the world to live? You know, with the publicity we've had over the last couple of years, and then just kind of the publicity of the border, uh, generally, uh, people always, um, you know, Wall Street Journal de described us as a dusty little border town a couple of occasions, and the reporter never came south of Corpus Christi to do that, and so uh, people always go away and say, gee, I'm really surprised it's such a neat city, and it, you know, a neat area, and, but I think what makes it up is the people. You know, we have great people here that are involved people. Um, uh, I always tell uh, a story for the leadership program of why I think McAllen one of the uh, ways I think McAllen so special is um, a very important person got a traffic ticket one about a couple of years ago. One of the most important people in town, a business person, and he asked me, he said, hey, uh, Mayor, I, was, I wasn't mayor, I was city attorney actually, he said, what do I do? And I said, well, you know, um, if you, if, have you had any other tickets? He said, no. And I said, was a speeding ticket less than 20 miles an hour? And he said, yes. And I said, well, you're eligible for deferred adjudication, which we offer all our citizens. And uh, that's where if you don't get another ticket for six months, it gets dismissed. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, great, what do I have to do? And I said, well, you go down to the court and you pay the court costs that we have to send to the state and you fill out the forms and um, you'll get it. So he went down and he stood in line just like everybody else, you know, and he didn't complain. He didn't say, well, I have to go to court, I have to stand in line. He just did it, you know, and I thought that's what good leadership's all about. You know, nobody's, nobody's more special than anybody else, mm -hmm. but everybody's special. And that's what makes McAllen a great place, I think. Well, we thank you for spending some time with us today, for taking some time out of your busy schedule to do this interview with us. And I do want to reassure you and let you know that at St. Paul Lutheran Church, we lift you up in prayer on a regular basis, and we lift the government of McAllen up in prayer on a regular basis. And we just want to say thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning.